Hello, welcome to another video. My name is Jacob Soteris and I am going to speak to you today about all things automotive and specifically commission and how commission works. Now I've been asked this uh, by one of my wonderful viewers. I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you so much. And thank you for commenting. It means a lot. So if you haven't already, even if you don't like this, find a like button somewhere and hit it, comment, get involved, good, bad, ugly, you know, all that stuff. I mean, comment on these beautiful surroundings that I'm in. It's about commission and how commission works in car sales. Now, one thing that is important to remember is commissions is everything. Basic salary in car sales is not huge. Notoriously, it is quite low. So you're not going to be earning, if you didn't sell any cars and you were living, well, if you weren't selling many cars consistently and you were living off your basic wage, you wouldn't be, <laughs> you'd be fired. <laughs> Out you go. You'd be fired pretty quickly. But ultimately, your basic salary is not what's there to live on. It's a area that the dealerships can basically say, we pay a wage, minimum wage here. There's an income coming in, essentially. But really, commission is everything. To put it in perspective, in uh, the first year and a half of me selling cars, we uh, my basic salary was £13,000. I don't know what that is in dollars if you're watching this in America, but £13,000. Not a lot. Okay, not <laughs> much after tax you can really live on however from earning my commission I actually just topped over £40,000 uh, again not sure if the changeover to dollars but £40,000 so the majority more than double my income was commission quite a huge portion of it so commission's really really important and basically the way that you're earning commission is via selling cars Duh. each car has a profit margin now this is important depending on all dealerships have a different way all dealer groups have a different way of how they pay their commissions how they work things and the profit margins some just play a f pay a f <laughs> some just pay a flat fee so you sell a car you earn 50 pounds uh you sell a car you earn 70 pounds whatever that is i always worked in places where there was a basic fee so if the car had no profit in there okay that's not your fault that the car has sat around for a long time or the dealerships have had to follow the market and the car's taken a pummeling and is now not making any money it's breaking even losing money that's not your fault that unit still needs to be moved so what will often happen is they'll pay you a spot bone spot bone what the hell is They'll pay you a spot payment. So it's kind of a bonnet payment, they call it, for, for moving the metal. Now, that could be anything. That could be £45, £50. Sometimes if it's going over age, you might hear this phrase as over age. So a car that stays in for too long on the forecourt and doesn't sell, it gets to a point where the manufacturers start fining the dealership for it being there. So they just want it gone. So they'll put an incentive in place. For example, there was one car that needed to be gone. It was in stock for sort of like 200 days or something. It was a, it was horrible. And that's why no one was buying it. But they put a spot payment on that of 200 pounds. Any sales exec that could sell that car, 200 pounds was the base fee. You'd earn 200 pounds selling this car. Even if you were with a customer for 30 minutes and you managed to sell this car, you'd be earning a hundred, what was that, 400 pounds an hour or something. So 200 pounds flat fee for selling in the car. That's not to mention on top of that, you could also earn for selling finance. You could earn for selling products, warranties, all of these different things that come along and they're all additional payments. So I'll tell you one example. There was a car that I sold. Now this one had some profit in it and the way that we used to work is you would take 8% of the profit off of the car plus any additional things that you sold unless the profit just wasn't there. In that case, you would have the spot payment. And this one particular car that I sold, let me turn this off, get out of it. And this one particular car that I sold netted me £700. One car. And it took me, I mean, an hour and a half with the customer, £700 for an hour and a half's work. Now, that is not the norm. I didn't walk around selling 20, 30 cars a month or earning £700. I mean, I would, I would be in a nicer setting than this. <laughs> but it, it goes to show that there is a huge amount of money there. The average on a car, you're usually with a customer for one and a half to two hours as an average. And if you sell a normal car with a normal bit of profit across it and maybe one product or one finance package, then you're averaging usually about £150 roughly per car that you can sell. 
So you've got to think, your basic doesn't sound that huge, but once you start adding in profit margins, bonnet payments, products, so for example, you sell a gap policy, I'll go into these in other videos, but a gap policy for a car, which is a brilliant product, don't get me wrong, I was never one of those salespeople to try and sell you something I didn't believe in. Gap was brilliant. Okay, an insurance type, if your car's written off or stolen, Gap would clear any outstanding finance, you didn't owe anyone anything, they'd return you to the invoice value of the car. It, just, it was a brilliant thing. Need to say, because I believed in it, I sold quite a lot of it. Fortunate thing was, every time I sold one, I earned £40. So on most cars, I would sell a car, an average, let's just say it was £100 for selling that car, once I'd taken the profit margin instantly I'd usually add another £40 onto that 140 because there was gap insurance. You have paint protections, there's another £25. Warranties, another £30. Finance, £50 per finance. A lot of people finance their cars nowadays. So there's an instantly, usually another £50 on top. You can see how things start adding up. And this is where you'll hear that the best salespeople, the ones that earn the most money, are the ones that can sell the products, that can sell the finance. You'll have these people that we call in the trade cash no bits okay i feel like a cash no um what am i doing? that looks weird doesn't it cash no, cash no bits basically means you have just sold a unit you didn't sell any products any finance no nothing you are just taking that car and nobody wants to be selling a cash no bits because you're not optimizing how much you can earn and if you went through life just selling a cash no bits on every single product, you'd be doing yourselves out of tens of thousands of pounds or whatever that is in dollars every, every month, uh, every year, every month. So you'd be doing yourself out of a lot of money every year. So what you really want to focus on, if you really want to earn as much commission as you can, is your ability to sell finance, your ability to sell these additional products, the warranties, the gap, the paint protections, all of these things, they add up and they are worth so much money to you. Because as I say, your basic is very low. Usually, I mean, I moved around dealerships. My first one was 13,000. My second dealership I worked at was 18,000, which started to go up. It's still not a great earn. But you top on top of that all the commission you can earn and you're in, in easily, if you're a good salesperson, up in the 50, 55,000 pound a year. Now, you've got to remember that is doctor's wage. That is is more than paramedics, all these people that are doing such amazing things for us. It's a huge salary. Like it's a re people work their whole lives to get to that. And car sales, you can go in with no experience no formal training. I mean, I didn't even go in with strict GCSEs. I'm not very smart. I'm not the smartest tool in the box. I mean, I went in and I just knocked on every door that I could see. I knocked on every dealership and I just said, hey, can I see the manager? And that is, I got three interviews in one day and I walked in, someone saw something in me and they went, yeah, let's give you a shot. The rest is history. So you can walk into a job that can earn you 50. I mean, there was one gent, to give you a bit of inspiration, one guy at one of our Citroen dealerships, amazing guy. And he was a monster, uh, but he earned so much money because <laughs> he was amazing at selling products, amazing at selling cars, amazing at selling the finance. Um, his, his company car was not a Citroen. It was a brand new Audi RS7. No, RS6. RS6, one of those advanced things. The big estates, bastard. I can't swear. <laughs> so the potential to earn huge sums is mad. It's mind boggling that you can just go into this this trade, this fun, this engaging, this innovative, this um, just incredible trade and earn so much money. So if you're money driven, if you're business driven, the automotive industry is just one you've got to do. And if it's commissions that you're worried about, don't worry. They will always look after you. At the end of the day, the dealerships want you to earn as much as you possibly can. Because if you're earning, they're earning. Because don't get it, it, it wrong. The dealerships are making far more commission than you are <laughs> on every car that you sell. If that car has £1,200 profit in it, you're not taking £1,200 profit. You're probably taking a hundred pounds from that okay and they are taking the rest they've got costs they've got warranties they've got to do servicing all these things they're taking far more than you are in most cases so don't worry they want you to do well so you will do well and they'll do well but yeah commission is a is a funny area is one that people worry about 
but it's it's an area that just don't worry about your basic a lot of the time. Basics can be low in the motor trade. Focus on commission. Focus on upskilling yourself. If you're good at selling finance, good at selling products, good at selling warranties, you will earn a fortune in the motor industry. Hopefully you have enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed. It's on one of these sides. I'm not too sure which. And make sure you've liked this video if you can. It would mean the world to me. And you've commented and all the usual stuff that you hear on every other video. Um, I won't regurgitate. I just did regurgitate. But, you know, do your bit. Appreciate it. And I'll uh, catch you in another video.